Allergies can make you sneeze, make your eyes itch, or block your nose. We spoke with Dr. Michael Gatto of Desert Regional Medical Center in Palm Springs about what can be done for nasal blockage from those allergies and from other causes. When people come into my office, if it's, and I'd say probably nine out of 10 people that complain of chronic sinusitis or chronic nasal obstruction, 90% of them have allergies. So when you breathe in certain pollens that you could be allergic to, you would wind up having a swelling in the nasal chamber, and it's actually the filtering tissues. These are called turbinates. What they do is they filter and humidify the nose. However, when you breathe in something you're allergic to, they will swell. And because the nose is an extremely small area, all it takes is these tissues to swell moderately, and what will happen is it creates uh, not only obstruction, but it will also create pressure. As those tissues swell, they will then cause pressure, and most of the time I tell people they just have to take their hand. If this is the problem, that is caused by nasal swelling. So we usually start with an allergy exam that we do in my office, and we ascertain what the allergies are. The treatment are shots. And what we do with the shots is we desensitize the immune system to not to react to these pollens. So over time, the symptoms become less. The second thing that we can do in the office is a radio frequency procedure, which in what that does is it actually puts a radio wave similar to a microwave is how I usually tell people. So it's essentially like putting a piece of meat into a microwave. When you put this radio wave in there, it shrinks down the tissue permanently. It's a very, very good procedure, no side effects. Um, there's no downtime and there's no pain involved and it's an office procedure. Works very well. However, I tell people that if they do their procedure, they have to be able to rectify the allergies or the swelling will come back in a, you know, in an undefinable amount of time. It could be any time. So I usually like to go the allergy route. If they don't, they can do the procedure again. It is a procedure that can be done multiple times. And it is also covered by insurance, so it's, there's nothing to lose to do it. What are some of the other causes of nasal blockage? You could have a actual physical uh, nasal blockage in the nose, which is usually a septal deviation. And septal deviations are most commonly traumatic. So if you've ever had a nasal injury, you could have a septal deviation. And you can also have even nasal polyps, which is a sinus problem also related to allergies which then develop into almost growths that grow out of the sinuses and extend into the nose. They will also block the nose because it's a physical obstruction. So multiple reasons can cause nasal obstruction. Some of them even can be all of them. It's very frustrating. Not being able to breathe causes a lack of concentration, lack of sleep. It can cause lack of endurance. And then people start to get into over-the-counter medications. Now, the worst of these is the over-the-counter nasal sprays. And the reason for that is, is that you develop an addiction to these medications very quickly. And it's a physical and psychological dependence.